In today's video, I'm going to show you how to win as Netherlands. So let's just start it. Hello there, this is Lost Jedi and today we're going to play as Netherlands in Victoria 3 and I'm going to show you how you can be one of the strongest nation as Netherlands in Victoria 3. So first of all, let's talk about Netherlands position and how was Netherlands in 1836 and what are we going to do first? Well, first of all, I cannot say we're in the best position because we recently lost our core in Belgium. In fact, they're actually better than us in terms of economy and also the population. So the first thing first, I think we need to reconquer our provinces because mainly I don't really care about population at the start of the game because we're not going to use them all. But here's the catch. The Belgium has something we really need. Which is, as you can see from this provinces, Valonia has coal mines and iron mines and sulfur mines. This is literally one of the best provinces in Europe, so we need to get this province ASAP. And also, since they recently got their independence, they have no battalions or no fleets. While we have double amount of troops and triple, actually even more naval supremacy. So, at the start of the game, we're gonna conquer Belgium and then, as Netherlands... Of course, we need to colonize the world as well. So I'm going to focus on Africa where you should prioritize and then we're going to conquer Indonesia and South America as well. So we have a long journey. I think now we can start it. So first of all, let's start with our economy. I usually like to max up my people, but since we don't really earn a lot of money, I can only go for high tax and consumption taxes. I think you should go for this one as well. Clothes and tobacco would be enough. Don't need to... Add millions of them, maybe luxury clothes, maybe services. Yeah, let's do the services as well. This is pretty much enough. For your government rates and military rates, let's not touch that for now. For technology, you want to get this mechanical tools ASAP. So I'm just going to go for that and this one as well. And then the railway. So these trees are vital. Other than that, it's, it's just up to you. And also, as you can see, we can actually form a nation, actually two nations. One is Central Europe. If you want, we can form this one as well, but you need to mention in the comments. So we that next video. But for today, I'm going to show you how to unite the Netherlands and be one of the strongest power in Europe. So we're just going to aim for this one, which is so easy. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. For your buildings, I recommend you to build only two construction centers because we don't really have that much money at the start of the game so no need to push further after that we need to build some tooling workshops so let's build them here and one in holland and also let's do some artillery foundry and arm industry mainly because i'm gonna attack a lot of nations so lastly we're gonna get road maintenance to these two provinces these are state edicts which will help you and now i think we have a decent start so let's just use our improved relations mechanic for every great power literally every great power in europe just try to use it once you're out of influence, you're just gonna go here and rivalry with all the minor powers in Germany. So for example, these countries are so small that you don't even need to bother. As you can see, we have tons of influence power. Now you can unpause the game. So a week pass. For we're gonna mainly focus on Africa. I know we're gonna get Belgium, but still, we're gonna need a lot of coal mines. So we're gonna aim for this provinces here, Zulu. This is the best province in the game, in my opinion, in Africa. Because it leads you to go over this province, which has both coal mines and iron mines. Crazy amount, guys. These provinces are so bad. And also, they have this modifier, which gives you 10% extra for coal mines. So, this is like a coal heaven. And also, this province is also very good, by the way, in my opinion. So, these three provinces should be your first target if you're playing in, as Netherlands. Actually, if you're playing as any European power. So, let's just attack them very quick. There you go, this is our first war, so what you're gonna do is so basic. We're gonna land an invasion, so let's go here, pick Zulu land, and oh by the way, our navy needs one more admiral, which is a cool mechanic in my opinion by the way. So let's just go for that, by the way, now I remember, we need to focus on our lows as well. We have a great low system by the way, everything is perfect here, like there are a few things that we need to focus on. First of all, National Guard, I think this is very important, so I'm just gonna get this guys. And now we can actually do the landing. So let's pick Zulu land and let's pick our army. And we don't have any general here as well. So let's have some general. I like armed forces. So I think I'm going to go for this guy. And actually we can get one more guy. So I'm going to go for this guy as well. Let's do our naval invasion. Pick Zulu land. And finally we can actually do our invasion, naval invasion here. 
Well, there you go. This was our first peace deal and first colonization here. And we got our first land. So let's not go away. Let's stay here, I guess. And let's go for these provinces as well. Then we will focus on Europe later on. So this is very easy target. And I think you should really get it ASAP. Because why not? These countries will have like very, very bad technology compared to European one. So you're going to have an easy time. And also we got the National Guard. That was so easy. Like way easier than i expected which probably it will be same for you guys as well and then my preparation is going for pro laws as well these will industrialists in your government that's why i'm going for this specific laws by the way but you can pretty much go for it because you already have a really good government so you don't really need to rush for anything all right we got our second province as well and this will be the last one so just go for this one as well and then we will focus on actually in europe so let's position our army here do we, does this guy have any troops? Yeah, he does. So let's just keep our main army in Africa. And then we will go back to Netherlands and deal with Belgium. And now we have all three provinces we are looking for. So we're kind of safe. By the way, once you conquer provinces from far away from your homeland, which most of the time we're going to do that, you need to build some ports, at least one, so that you can actually have access to their market so this is very vital just build one port in zululand that would be probably enough for you guys i think it's finally time for our conquest for belgium it's 1838 i think this is the time where you should also try to get your states back by the way we have return states option here so just go for that there's diplomatic play here we're very very strong but if there is any chance you can actually get some help from other countries that would be amazing and there you go, as you can see, we started our war and nobody interrupted us in Europe. I, as I mentioned earlier, European great powers, if you do this war early, I mentioned one more time, you need to do this war early so that the other powers actually don't join the war because otherwise I tried a couple of times and Belgium actually got some allies. So you need to avoid that. In order to avoid that, you need to declare your war. By the way, I recruit more troops because the war might be a little bit tough because AI actually built some troops and conscription, so you need to do these things. And this was a very, very easy war. By the way, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of tough, but we got help from Dutch, Dutch East Indies, which is our colony, but it's stronger than us. I'm not gonna lie. And also Luxembourg really helped me out on this war. So now we can do the peace deal. It was not really hard to maintain this war. We didn't really lose too much thing. Especially when you compare with Dutch East Indies. They lost more than we did. But it's okay. Let's do our peace deal. And now, united as Netherlands. If you also conquered these provinces, then you're gonna need to go to cultures, nation formation, and united Netherlands. You have all provinces required. So just go for you form united Netherlands. And as you can see, we get 25 prestige, which is nice. A really nice flag other than that pretty much nothing changed but it's okay so now what we need to do we need to core these provinces but it's gonna cost you a lot of bureaucracy so you should really need to focus on building those government buildings which i'm right now going to do that so it's 1841 and i'm gonna show you a very nice trick that you really need to know the great Qing empire is gonna have this affection which is very very bad and it's gonna last for four more years so this is exactly the time you need to attack Ming. And what you want to do for war target, I think you should go always go for Taiwan Island because this island is very, very weak. So it will be so easy for you to take. But I don't prefer to go for conquer state because this will give you a lot of infamy, which we really don't want to. So just go for take treaty port, which will only cause you infamy, which I don't think it will be a problem for most of the nations. So let's just go for this. And then, once the diplomatic play starts, just add war operation as well. This war operation is gonna save and for your entire life. So let's mobilize our army and position them in somewhere in Africa. Or like if you have a province in Indonesia, you can also send them over here as well. And then we're gonna do a naval invasion to Taiwan. I'm gonna show you in a second actually. There you go, the war started. We're gonna need to cancel this route. And then, okay, we're going to select our army. Any army would work, by the way. This is going to be very easy for you because, again, you're already so strong. And they also have a lot of debuffs. So, occupying that line will give you a lot of war score that we're going to need. Because, as you can see, now we're actually losing the war. So, we need to do this naval invasion. In order to make war this war and faster, I'm actually going to try to land here as well. 
Again, guys, don't be scared that he has like 500 battalions. Even though you have only 20, you can crush them so easily. So let me just show you the statistics here. Like they have six defense, guys. Like this is so bad, I'm telling you. Like there's no way you're gonna lose this war. Just land any place in China and then you will immediately end this war. Actually, they're cool with uh, war operation, but I also want their to the port. So I'm actually gonna land here. It's almost there. It's almost needs to be 95, 99, one more month. Actually, we don't even need to wait. Let's just send our peace deal. And there you go. Now we have a lot of money, guys. I'm telling you, the Qing will give you so much money that you're not going to be in trouble for five more years. So I actually stopped my buildings because integrating Belgium is not the best option. Now we're only losing 13,000, which is not that big deal. Now I actually want to go for South America because I, as I told you, this place is so free. I think you should always aim for the conquest for South America. So I'm just going to go for Chile because I think this is the easiest target. And then we can go to North, especially Venezuela, New Granada. These countries are usually has low population. So you will have easy time to conquer them. By the way, you're going to have two really nice decisions here. So I'm just going to go for both. I do have the requirements, so I did it. And I think you should do the same thing. Also, I need to mention one more thing, guys. Whatever I try to get, they will always revolt. Like, whatever I do, there's always rebellion. So it's almost impossible to pass laws. But it's actually the same for most of the European nations. I play with most of them. But anyways, that's really not important. What I'm going to tell you here, once you get the railway technology, you should build every place, every single province that you have in Netherlands, this railway. It's very important, I'm telling you. This way, your production will be 10 times stronger. Okay, it's 1848 and our war operation with Qing is over and we need that money as well. Like, we cannot say no to that money. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attack this country. When you attack this country, it automatically starts war with the Ming, which we actually want to. So let's, let me show you here. And then you're going to add war operation with Qing. So this way, we're going to get one more war operation without actually going to like a harsh war. So let me just deploy this army over here. And then with our main army, we're going to mobilize him and try to naval invasion here. Actually, I'm going to position my army here so that we'll be ready for war in case of war. Well, guys, due to my vessel being so stupid, I kind of lost this war. I'm not going to push further because it's going to cost me a lot more. I know I've killed a lot of guys in China. This war is going to take forever. So I'm just going to do the peace deal. We're going to lose the treaty port that we got from Ming. But it's okay. I'm going to tell you why. Because for the next war, guys, by the way, French ask us to give them a province and we're going to give them one of our provinces. No, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. Anyways, for the next war, what we're going to do, we're going to do the same strategy. We're going to try to land in the island, Taiwan Island, so that we can actually get our war score. Because in this war, we couldn't get our war score. That was the main problem here. Now, let's actually focus on our economy because it was... Heavily rely on war operation, but we don't get it for this time. So I'm actually going to build my army and then we're going to focus on the technology as well. We were a major power, but we also lost our status here due to the war that we lost against Ming. But it's all good. Full capitulation. Now we won our first war against Venezuela. We will do the second one, by the way. No worries. I was actually gonna take whole Haiti, but unfortunately I picked the wrong province. And when I try to... And the other province, I can't. So for now, for this war, I'm just going to take one province. It's okay. We already have a lot of infamy, which I certainly didn't realize. As you can see, it's 24. You might think this is okay, but it's not okay. You always make sure that your infamy is below 30. If you're playing like a minor power. Yes, now we seems like a great power. But I am telling you, we're not as strong yet. So try to keep it easy. For a long time, I was trying to change this. I actually want to do autocracy, but I don't think they're going to let me do it. So I'm just going to go for wealth voting or oligarchy. Probably for my game, oligarchy would be better. So I'm just going to go for them. Uh, trade union is going to piss, but I don't really care to be honest. Uh, our war with Haiti, it's almost over. Let's try to get this. There you go. They accept our peace deal. So let's just do our peace deal. <laughs> Unfortunately, we literally united the... Sorry, divided the island. But it's okay. We're going to fix this problem in the future, I hope. 
So exactly 20 year pass and for all this time I had no ally, zero ally. Now I'm gonna get one. Actually I was planning to get Great Britain but for some reason they didn't like me for the entire game. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna either ally France or Prussia. I don't want to give obligation to France and I actually want to conquer France so I'm just gonna ally Prussia without any obligation as well and I will hope that Prussia will form North German country and maybe then Germany so that he can be actually powerful ally but I think even this position Prussia is pretty strong okay now this is one of those times we're gonna attack Qing as I as I mentioned earlier, but this time we're gonna prepare what we're going to do. So let's see if I can position my army here. I can, so let's just do the... Again, the same trick. Take treaty port, you're gonna click this, and then you're gonna start the diplomatic war play. And then, you're gonna add war operation. Well, if you realize Ming is strong, or you can call your allies, which is my Prussia. Prussia is my ally. Or I can even call France again. So as you can see here, even Russia is coming by the way guys, like you can literally call anyone into this war and make it very easy for you. However, if you can deal this war by yourself, it would be the best option, which is going to be the case in my run because I don't want to call anyone. So I'm basically going to do my own thing and I'm telling you it's going to be so easy. You don't need anyone into this war. Guys, do you remember the time that I told you I can deal with China by myself? Uh, apparently I couldn't. So I'm just going to accept the white piece because this war cost me a lot of shit. So let's just do the white piece. And you know what they say, third has a charm. Probably in the third war we can actually defeat them. And I will actually call my ally so that the war will be 10 times easier. The year is 1861 and the America is invading Russia. So I think this is exactly the time where we should end this video. Let's talk about what we have done. As you probably know, we united the Netherlands. That was the first deal. And then we're in the South America. I was actually very slow on my conquest because of the infamy. So for example, if I could have tried to get New Granada, I was 100% sure that somebody will try to help him. So I was kind of slow there. And then we secure our colonies in South Africa, which is the most vital provinces in Africa, by the way. Again, you could do a lot of things. For example, you could take this country or you could go to Arabian Peninsula, but I kind of find it very waste of time. So I just don't do it. For Dutch East Indies, what we have done, we conquer a couple of provinces in Brunei Island, the ones which are important. And actually what I'm going to try, I'm going to reduce their autonomy. I hope they will accept it. Let's see. There you go. They didn't accept it. And we're going to war with the Dutch East Indies, which is okay. We can defeat them easily. Now, let me show you the country's details. We have 20 million GDP, which is pretty strong in my opinion. Let me show you the other countries. So when you look at the GDP, we are really strong guys. Like when you look at the Japanese shogunate, which their population is like way higher than us as you can see and then there's spain there's the ottomans there's brazil but even if you combine them we're we're in the top and also keep that in mind we have a situation like britain because they have british rush and they also have their own country we have the same thing we have united netherlands and dutch east indies which is right below japanese they have 17 million gdp and they're also our vessels so when you combine this we're actually pretty strong we are officially great power, we're in the 7th rank, our literacy is 61% which is very very high in my opinion. We have exactly 10 million population, our budget is I think it's really good, 23,000 in plus is something I wasn't expecting to be honest. But hey, we made it. So thanks for watching this video, I really appreciate if you liked this video. If you have any question or if you have any suggestion for the next video, I will read every single comment. And I'm trying to get the 1000 subscribers, so if you subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate it. Until the next video, take care.